Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset, along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello, this is Holly Wharton, and I'm really excited to share today's episode with you. So today, uh, I've got another shared show with Joe Casey. We're going to be talking a little bit about how to get a book out of your head and onto Amazon. Now, if you've been following me and what I've been up to this year, I've released three books so far. I've released two business books and one kind of travel walking reflections of my experience of walking a um, hundred miles down the South Downs Way last year. Now I've got a number of other books planned for this year, including business books and other walking books. So because I have this background in not only book marketing, but self-publishing, because as you may remember, I used to have a business called Tribal Publishing where I helped authors not only promote their books online and connect with their readers using social media, but I also helped a little bit with project management for books. So because I have this background and because I'm now writing a number of books myself, we decided to do this episode where Joe kind of picks my brains about how to get this book out of your head and onto Amazon and start selling your books. Now, I know this can be really daunting for a lot of entrepreneurs, but it's actually really, really easy. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to how to decide on the topic, different things that you need to do, how to write your book can be easier than you think, um, how to get it edited and proofread, how to get the cover designed, um, what else you need to do if you're going to create a paperback, if you're going to create an ebook. Now, all of the stuff, like I said, we're going to break it down into really, really simple tips. And I hope that this makes it easy for you to get your book out there. Now, I know a lot of entrepreneurs really, really want to write their own book, but it feels like a really big and daunting process. Well, it's not. It can be easy. So I hope that you're inspired by this episode. Please let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, please do get in touch. We also have a downloadable PDF that gives you kind of a step-by-step -step information on what you need to get your first book written and out on Amazon. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, everybody. This is Joe Casey. Welcome to the monthly um, episode that I do with the lovely Holly Wharton from the Business Mindset Podcast. Hi, Holly. Hello. How are you? I'm great. And I'm really excited about today. So for those of you who may be a bit confused, if you're on the Business Mindset Podcast, you are in the right place. And if you are on the Work Happy Coaching Podcast, you are also in the right place. Because every month, Holly Wharton and I do a joint kind of like a discussion um, based episode where we dive deep into a particular subject that comes up a lot for us in our industry or share tools or just kind of have a have a, a chinwag that we hope is, is going to be useful to you. And I'm really excited about today because yeah. I am going to be effectively getting to pick Holly's brains about a subject that she knows loads about I know very little about and I know is something that comes up for so many of us, whether you're uh, coaches or entrepreneurs, and that is how do you get a book out of your head and onto Amazon? Yay. So many of us feel that we have a book inside of us. So many of us feel that, you know, when you've read the business book or you've read the, the book in your industry and you kind of think, hmm, I could do something like that. But You've got no clue how to, to even go about it. Well, Holly is the person to go to because do you want to share a little bit about your, your background, Holly? Because I'm sure that there are maybe some people who don't know this about you. Okay. My background. <laughs> oh, when did this all start? So, I mean, my business has gone through so many different incarnations over the past few years, but one of its incarnations was um, my business, which was called Tribal Publishing, which was where I worked with authors to help them market their businesses using social media. And during that 
process of working with authors on social media, I also learned a lot about how to self-publish books. I learned a lot about the traditional publishing industry and about self-publishing. I learned about how to, you know, create eBooks, how to create paperbacks, how to, you know, not necessarily do it yourself, but how to project manage the process of getting a book um, self-published and the pros and cons of that and traditional publishing. So I, you know, it wasn't until recently when I started producing my own books that I realized just how much I had learned over the last few years of doing that work. So very happy to talk about this today. So what do you see as the, can we do a bit of myth busting right, sure. right at the beginning? So I know that there've been many times I've thought normally when I'm going on a, on a nice walk or I'm listening to an audio book or I'm kind of, you know, in the bath or something, I kind of go, oh, I wish I could write a book one day. And then almost immediately, a voice pops up in my head that says, you'll never follow through. You haven't got a big enough audience. You haven't got anything interesting to say. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing just almost immediately gets swept away by this wave of, oh, that all seems so kind of overwhelming, the, mm. the, the options. And just, I wouldn't even know where to start. So can we just start off with a little bit of myth busting in mind? Is it really difficult to, to self-publish a book? I mean, I'm taking it because this is what you used to do and, and help people to do that. It can't be that difficult, can it? No, it's totally not that difficult. It's just, and it's something that you can either, you know, manage on your own or you could get like a VA or someone to help you manage the project. That's all it is. It's a project and you need to manage it. <laughs> Now, having trained in project management before, I guess perhaps that's easier for me than maybe some other people. And for people who get totally overwhelmed with big projects, maybe you need to bring someone in to help you with this. But it's it's super simple once you break it down into steps and you know what steps you need to break it down into. Obviously, you've got to write the book. Then from there, you have to you know decide which formats you want to produce it in. Do you want it to just be a Kindle book or an ebook? Do you want to produce also paperback? Those are two very different processes. You need to work with someone to get the cover design done. But it's it's just like any other project you would do with your business. You've got all these different bits. You've got different people you're going to outsource different parts to. And, you know, you've just got to find the right people for your project and get it all done. Okay. Yeah. I'm somebody who who doesn't like project management. <laughs> and I'm I'm feeling a bit queasy as you're talking about all all of that. But so that that does sound like a lot. So could could we break it down? Maybe for the for the for the likes of me. Well, first of all, you've got to write the book, and okay. there are so many different ways of doing that. Now, I love writing, so it's really easy for me to get an idea break it down to timeline, sit down at my computer and just write it. Um, my second book, which is going to be released probably in a couple, two or three weeks, um, I wrote when I was in bed, not feeling well a couple months ago. So I was, you know, in bed, not supposedly not able to work, but got this idea for this book and just fleshed it out and wrote most of it when I was in bed. So that kind of thing is easy to me, but I recognize that it's not easy yes, for a lot of people. For the rest of us humans. <laughs> exactly. For the rest of you humans. Um, there's so many other ways to write a book. Um, Denise Duffield Thomas always talks about her Get Rich Lucky Bitch book and how she didn't actually sit down at a computer and write that book. She had a lot of audio recordings of things that she put together, um, hired someone to do a transcript for her, hired an editor to make the transcript look like it was the written word, not just a conversation. And then she went through it and it became a book. So, you know, you can talk your book or you could write your book. You could also have your book ghost written. Obviously that's going to have more of a cost to it, but you know, you can share your message with someone and there are people who exist that are dedicated to professionally taking your concept and your words and your style and making the book for you. So there are so many different ways of getting the content of that book written. Right. Okay. Because so, I, well, I think that's one of the the hardest kind of mental things. For, for me, I think, oh, I'd love to write a book. And then I go, oh, you never have the self-discipline to write a book. Mm. Well, and another or the time thing, or the, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, another thing is, you know, most fiction books are about 80,000 words. Most nonfiction books are between 50 and 60,000. But with self-publishing, you can do whatever the heck you want. My first two books and my next book that's coming out as well are all short books. So they're between 
uh, 18 and 23,000 words. So they're kind of like a third of a normal nonfiction book. And I've done this on purpose because I don't want to overwhelm people with theory and ideas. I want it to be actionable. So I give them the information they need and then they've got to take action on it or not. But my, my point of creating these books in such kind of a short bite-sized format is so that it's easier for people to read what they need and then take action on it. So if you want to give that a try and just do a shorter book, you can do that. Um, and it's something that in the business world makes sense because a lot of times, especially in the coaching world, you don't want people to just, you know, read this fabulous self-help book and then just think, oh, what a lovely theory, but then do nothing with it. You want people to take action. So it, it's quite logical to create a shorter book. And I have long, I've actually written another longer book that's coming out probably in um, June of this year. And then I've got other longer books in my head that are waiting to come out into the computer. <laughs> But that's because I love writing so much. But I started with the short books. So you know how lots of online business owners create like an ebook for download for free on their website. Mm. You know, maybe you could take your ebook, flesh that out a little bit, make it, you know, a good 20,000 words, and then release that as a Kindle book. Mm. That's another option. So you can take existing content that you've got. Maybe you've got a whole series of blog posts that were really interesting and useful and actionable. You can smush those together <laughs> into one document. <laughs> edit it up and, you know, turn that into a small book. So there are so many different ways that you can get content for your book. And it doesn't have to be like a giant overwhelming project. Mm. It's really interesting because I, I wonder if technology has made us, I don't know, we, we want kind of more targeted information because I, I know that I tend to listen to books much more than I, than I used to. I think it since having kids and also mm -hmm. having a business, it's like, you know, I don't get the two hours to sit down and read a book yeah. that I used to, to to love to do. And I guess I've kind of got the habit, but I love listening to audiobooks. Yes. There's also some, have you heard of Blinkist? No, I haven't. Yeah, there's, there's a service called Blinkist and basically they, they're like the Cliff's Notes oh. for lots and lots and lots of kind of like business books, personal development books. It's a relatively new service. I think it's been going probably less, less than a year. And I know lots of people in certainly the coaching space and personal development space. I've got quite a few clients who've mentioned it to me that that's, you know, so Gary V brings out a, a, a book and that they have it, they have it on there. So you don't even have to read the whole thing. Ooh. There's are people there who almost like do a synopsis and they do audio versions. And, um, I, th I think the idea is that they, they get down to 20 minutes for Ooh, you. Excellent. Um, so I'm, I'm also wondering if maybe that as we go forward is going to change our, our perceptions of what a book has to be. It's changing the rules. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. Publishing world has changed so much over the last, three to five years. It's been amazing. Mm. And, and you mentioned audiobooks. Amazon also has a program called ACX, where you can either narrate your own audiobook and upload the audio files for sale on Amazon and other online retailers, or you can do a joint venture with audio voice talent and you team up and you share the profits of your audiobooks. Oh, so wow. That's another way to make it really easy to create books in different formats, such as audiobooks. Oh, now my, po my the podcast a bit in my brain is going, oh, 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 oh I could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, so already I'm seeing that there are probably a lot more possibilities and options than mm -hmm. I was thinking. So it's not the kind of sit down at your desk, hammer out 40,000 words hawk it around publishers, see if someone will publish mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's really kind of switching up the way that you think about what, what does the book need to be? What is the most appropriate length? Does it have to be something that, you know, you're going to do lots of theory or like for your book, is it going to be something that is going to be more useful to your, your readership if it's more actionable and it's more practical? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's what you mentioned about shopping it around to publishers as a business owner, I want to have, you know, I, I mean, I have control over every aspect of my business. Mm. I have control over who I hire for the different things that people help me out with. And I want that same control over any book that I have. Mm. When you're working with a traditional publisher, you don't have that control. They assign you an editor who may or may not be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. They create your cover artwork for you, which you may or may not like. Um, they do a little bit of marketing for you, but never as much as you hoped they would. Um, so you don't have control over any aspect of that process, really. Um, 
which is another reason why I like self-publishing because I've worked with so many different um, service providers for my clients that I now know who's a good fit for me in terms of editing, cover art, ebook formatting, um, interior uh, layout formatting, uh, typesetting, that kind of thing. So I know who I want for each stage of the process and I can pick and choose who I want to work with. You don't get that with traditional publishing. Okay. You're selling me on this. You're good at this. You're good, you're good at this. <laughs> Uh, could, so you've mentioned some of the options there about getting it transcribed and finding an editor. Mm-hmm. Um, so could you just explain those those two steps in a, in a little bit more detail? Because so having it transcribed, that's getting people obviously to type out the words, say if mm-hmm. you, you've kind of done the order. But that's not your book, is it? You need it to then be in a readable format. Exactly, yes, mm. because it's going to be literally the words that you said. And of course, we don't talk exactly in the same way that we write. Mm-hmm. So it's as if you just left that transcription as a book format, it would be kind of weird and awkward and not sound quite right to the mm-hmm. reader. So from there, you would need to hire an editor who would just take those words, polish them up and make it look more like the written word than it would just a conversation. Right. Okay. And kind of ballpark figure, how is that expensive? I mean, I know that's a (laughs) a silly word to use. How long is a piece of string? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So (laughs) yeah, I mean, mean, is this something you go to five or four or presumably you want someone who's got a bit of experience in that? You know, you could. I've worked with um, people for transcriptions on Fiverr and I've had them do excellent work. Mm -hmm. Um, I have worked with an editor on Fiverr and he did pretty good work. Um, And then there are other people that you can hire that aren't on Fiverr, um, who will, of course, charge a bit more and and do fantastic work. So it's just a matter of um, taking a look at work that they've done and seeing if they're a good fit. Uh, Now, one of the editors that I've worked with in the past allows you to send in one page of your manuscript, and then they kind of do their magic on it so that you can see what kinds of changes they would be making to your work and whether or not that's a good fit for you. And so that's always a really, really good thing. Um, if an editor can offer that to you, even if you pay you know, a small amount of money for it, uh-huh. a lot of places will offer it for free, however, so you can get a feel for whether or not their style of editing is going to reflect your voice and not make too many changes, but yet make it just kind of more readable and flowing. Mm. Okay, my, my next question again is going to sound really obvious, but where do you find these people? Do I just Google uh, ebook editor, or well, or do um, you have a list of recommended <laughs> sources? Or I, I, I can have, see a, another book coming out of you, Holly, yeah. about how to write a book. <laughs> yeah. Well, there've been so many of those written already, though. Um, yeah, I would just talk to people in the field who talk to anyone you know who's written a book or who has worked with editors. So I definitely have people that I've worked with and people that I can recommend. So if anyone wants to contact me, I'm happy to to share. Um, or yes, you know, you can just ask around online, ask around in Facebook groups, ask people for recommendations and then get in touch with those people. And, and again, get in touch with at least a couple of people so that you can get a feel for who's the best fit for you. I mean, this hiring an editor is just like hiring a coach or anyone else. You need them to be a good fit for you and your writing style. Okay. Now that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So we've got our manuscript. We've had it edited. Yes. Then what do we do with it? Well, you should also have it proofread, of course, oh, because yeah. editing is more like a style thing and proofreading uh-huh. is. I mean, I've worked on book projects where we've had books go through you know, five different rounds of proofreading. Everyone manages to catch something that the previous four people (laughs) haven't got. So proofreading is a really, really sticky thing. I mean, it's really tricky, not sticky, Um, (laughs) because those those errors stick in the manuscript. Um, It's amazing. It's like they hide. Um, So, you know, the spell check in Microsoft Word is good thing to run it through, but it's not going to cut it because there are always those little errors like TWO instead of TOO and the spell check is not going to pick that up. So it's Uh good to have at least another pair of eyes looking at it because another thing is if you're trying to proofread your own work, you know what you meant to say there. So your brain is automatically going to see what it is that it thought Mm -hmm. that you wrote. Um, Even if it was that you wrote uh, T-H-E-R-E instead of (laughs) (laughs) T-H-E-R-E. So, you know, it, it's important to have someone else take a look at that. And and that's much less expensive than um, 
editing, definitely. And there's tons of proofreaders out there that you can get. I mean, you can even ask friends to take a look at it for you. Um, but of course, it's, it's helpful to have someone yeah. pay who's used uh-huh. to. I'm, I'm thinking it's a good use of all of those friends who regularly point out my grammatical errors on blog yes. posts and Facebook. Yes. Things. <laughs> kind of like, yeah, do you mind just reading this? You yeah. Since you're so good at proofreading, yes. I wanted to ask you a little favor. <laughs> yeah, I'm already thinking that would not be a good career option for me. I would be the world's worst <laughs> proofreader. <laughs> You know, I used to think I was really good. I was the editor of the high school newspaper. I used to have to catch all this stuff. And I used to pride myself on my amazing proofreading skills. But they're not as good as they used to be. I've, you know, there's many times when I've been going through a manuscript of my own that I've read through, you know, two, three, four times. Mm -hmm. And then on the fifth time, I've caught something that I hadn't even seen before. Yeah, I used to work in e-learning, kind of online uh, learning, and we used to have a quality assurance uh, process. And no matter how many times I would have viewed my my own work, and you know, because we put like the words and the pictures on, on on the screen and things, no matter how many times. I think, okay, th- this one's good. This one's not going to come back with any errors. It would always come back with stuff because I think you get snow blind to it. Yeah, you do. You, and, you can't see your own. Yeah. Stuff. And the important thing to remember, however, is don't let perfectionism get in the way of releasing your book. Mm, good point. Because even traditionally published books have mistakes in them. We see that all the time. Mm-hmm. So don't feel like you have to proofread it 99 times you know, with 99 different people before you can release it. Mm -hmm. My first book that I released a couple months ago, I've since gone through the manuscript and I've seen there were a couple of errors in there. Oh, well, it's, it's understandable. You know, I, so don't let that perfectionism get in the way of you actually getting that book out there. Because another thing is it can be scary to put that book out there because who am I to be an author? Who am I to Mm -hmm. write a book? Who am I to put this thing out there on Amazon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and that that takes us back to our kind of traditional topic of conversation. I get with that that kind of the the mindset thing. So, are there any other mindset things that you think, oh, that you you see come up with with people who are wanting to kind of go through this this process? Any other tips, being that you've worked with so many authors? Well. A lot of the authors that I've worked with have been seasoned authors who have had many, you know, traditionally published books. But as someone who's new to the whole world of writing, I cannot stress enough the need to get a professionally designed book cover because people do judge a book by its cover. Your book cover is what people are going to look at on Amazon or any other online retailer and say, Yes or no. And if it's, if it's homemade or DIY or done by someone who is a graphic designer, but not necessarily specializing in book covers, Mm -hmm. it's going to look awkward. It's going to look just not professional. So the important thing is you need to work with a graphic designer who specifically specializes in book cover design. That I cannot stress enough. I've seen graphic designers who have other kinds of graphic design experience try to do book covers. It's like their brain doesn't speak that graphic <laughs> language of book covers. It's it's very, very specific kind of design and you need a very specific kind of designer. Um, so that is something that I, I will never get tired of saying <laughs> because so many new authors don't realize how mm. important your cover is. That would have never occurred to me. I, I would have probably tried to knock something up myself in Canva. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, the cover is super, super important. And I see people in Facebook groups all the time saying, oh, do you like this cover or that cover? I just put it together on, you know, yeah. um, or I got it on Fiverr. Um, yeah, no, this is something you're probably going to need to invest a little bit more money in um, and get a really professional design. Okay. Okay. So we've got a manuscript. We've had it edited. We've had it proofread. We've um, had a professional cover yes. designed. What, what next? How do we what then next? get it out into the world? Right. So you need to get it formatted in a way that people are going to be able to read it. So if you're going to do ebooks, um, there are two types of ebook files. There's uh, the Mobi file, .mobi, mm-hmm. and that's for Kindle books. And there's the EPUB format, which is for all other e-readers. So you need to work with, again, a professional ebook formatter because there's so many different technicalities that they need to do to your Word doc to make that file look good and professional and readable on e-readers. Um, and so that does have another cost 
And it depends again on the length of your book, but it's very, very important to get your ebook professionally formatted by someone who specializes in that. And I've worked with good ebook formatters and I've worked with really not good ebook formatters. <laughs> so I have learned from my experience, don't go with the cheap guys. There's a company in particular that I work with that's based in the UK um, and the rights are in both dollars and um, pounds. So they do work internationally, but they do good work. And they also have an ebook distribution program because the thing is, once you've got your ebook ready, you've got to get it onto the online bookstores, which if you do it on yourself, it you've got to do it individually. So you've got to upload it to Amazon for Kindle. You've got to upload it to um, the Apple store. You've got to upload it to Barnes and Noble in the US. You've got to upload it here, there, the other. Whereas if you go with someone like this particular company that I'm mentioning, they have a, I don't know how their system works, but they send it out not only to, I don't know, over 150 online bookstores, but also to libraries so that people can go into a library and borrow your book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and that's in very small annual fee. I think it's like, I want to say 30 pounds a year or less. Mm -hmm. And they just do that. You send them the information about your book. They just upload it and take care of that. And you can change things at any time. And this is another good thing about self-publishing. You can change your price at any time. You can change your cover at any time. You can change all kinds of things, um, which makes self-publishing really flexible. So that's the ebook. If you want to do a paperback, you need to first of all find someone to typeset the book for you. And that is kind of the interior layout design mm -hmm. of the book. And this is another area where you really need to work with someone who is professional typesetter. And I've seen self-published paperbacks that look really not professional. It's like they've used fonts that were kind of funky and you would never see in a traditionally published book mm -hmm. and they just don't look very, you know, professional. So you've got to go with a typesetter who's got experience and who knows how to create a book that looks really good. Um, and then from there, it's just a matter of taking the typeset PDF for the interior of the book and the cover art and putting it together on whatever company you decide to use to produce your paperback. And I also recommend going with a print on, a print on demand company. So like create space, which is an Amazon company. Lulu is good. Um, Ingram spark is good. Those are kind of the three main players in print on demand. Print on demand is really, really important because if you decide to do paperbacks, you don't want to get stuck with a room full of thousands of books. Doing a print run of your books can be really, really expensive, and you don't know how many of them you're going to sell. So you need to do use a technology that allows you to just print as someone buys it. Print on demand is literally that. The book is there, and if someone orders a book, it is printed and sent out to that person. If someone orders three books, they print three books and send them out. That's kind of That's amazing it. that we I can know, do that. These, I know. <laughs> okay. On one hand, I'm thinking, that sounds remarkably doable. On the other hand, I'm thinking, there's a lot of steps there that we need to. So, so it, a lot of steps, but not like too many hmm. steps. I mean, once you know what it is that you have to yeah. do, it's just a matter of hiring the people to help you with the mm -hmm. project and getting the things done in the right order. Um, so I'm I'm wondering, how I know I'm asking you this kind of on the fly. I'm wondering if we could put together like a little kind of cheat sheet just to yeah. map out the process for people that they uh, could get and we yeah. can put that in the show notes. Yeah, let's do that. I actually have something that I can that I've used for a different client that I can adapt and um, we can put that together. So cheat sheet for project management. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. So anything else, anything else that the budding author who's maybe driving in their car, reading, uh, uh, reading, hopefully not <laughs> listening to this and thinking, yes, that, that book is, it's ready to be birthed. It's ready to come out. This all sounds doable. Anything else that, that they need to know? Ah, uh, let me see. Uh, well, we've got, also got the audiobook. So if you want to produce an audiobook, that's something else. Uh, ISBN numbers. So ISBN numbers, um, what the heck does that even stand for? Um, international book number, international standard book number. That's what it is. So that's like your book's special name. <laughs> so it's like the code that each format of a book has. So my first book that I released, Business Beliefs, it has 
two different ISBNs. So it's got one ISBN for the Kindle book, the Moby, and one ISBN for the EPUB. Now, if I'd done a paperback, I would have a third ISBN for the paperback. So ISBN numbers are purchased either singly in groups of 10, 100, 1,000, probably 10,000, um, and you get them in each country has a different kind of organization that assigns ISBN numbers. So you just need to purchase a block of those numbers and have those available for, you know, however many books. So I have a lot of different plans for books this year. I bought a pa package of a hundred ISBN numbers. Okay. Okay. So, right. I'm just trying to recap this. This is my mind. So you get your book out of you in some way. So either you write yes. it, you record it and get it transcribed. But you, you kind of get it on paper. You then get it edited. You mm -hmm. get it proofread. Then if you're doing paperback, you have to go typeset. set. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing the ebook, you need to have somebody who specializes in doing kind of layouts for, for yeah, ebooks e in the formatting. different formats. Yeah. Okay. You need to get a professional cover designed by someone who specializes in... Um, covers for books not just you know any old graphic designer to do it and don't do it yourself on canva yeah please don't <laughs> okay you need to have an isbn number mm -hmm. um and then you need to have some way of getting it up to amazon and you recommend going with a company who will just handle all of that and the distribution for you yeah definitely yeah have i covered everything yeah, I think I, so. Yes. I, 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 my, my thing is basically if you can count the steps on your fingers, then it's doable in, in yeah. my head. <laughs> well, and then, of course, you've got to market the book. But, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, this, this podcast is going out to people who, you know, probably have their own businesses, probably have their own email list, their mm -hmm. own community, their social media. So they're already doing marketing for their businesses. And so this book marketing would just kind of fit into that as a separate pro you know, kind of a part of that. Whereas new authors who have never done any kind of marketing online or offline really struggle with this because they've got to build up their platform from zero. Mm. Um, so this is a way in which business owners really have kind of a foot in the door to marketing their book because they're already marketing their businesses. And this is just kind of like a new product that their businesses produced. Yeah. And it's a great way. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't care what you, what, what you say. I know that kind of that we have this whole online world, but I still think there is some special cachet if you are published author, yes. author of. There is something about having a book um, that gives you that that kind of sense of authority. I think in in people's eyes. Mm, definitely, I definitely agree with that. People, you know, when you tell people that you've written a book, people are impressed mm. <laughs> like now as we've heard today it's not that difficult it's totally doable but people still think wow she wrote a book yeah and i was just talking today to um someone who had met someone else at um a networking group who said that she wrote her book and now she tells everyone to write a book because that's how she gets the majority of her clients oh, wow. through her book uh-huh so as you, you know if you're writing a book that's business related as opposed to fiction. Um, it's a really, really good idea to mention throughout the book clients that you've worked with, um, obviously as they relate to the book matter, but results that you've got for clients, how you work with clients, you know, obviously links to your website, links to your social media, links to all your stuff about how you can help people. But definitely you need to be seeding your readers, you know, seeding that book with little bits of how you work with people and how you've helped people, because that is the way that you can make the book work for you mm. in your business. Mm. I think this is uh, this is definitely something that I am going to explore more. You have you've kind of sold me on it. I knew you would. I knew this would happen. I knew it. But I would love to know what uh, what you listening to this think of it. Have you got a book in you? Are you wanting to get that book? out of you we would love to to hear and, and holly's been really generous and and offering you know to kind of share some of her her resources and, and her kind of um roadmap to doing this so let us know if this podcast actually um helps to inspire you to to get that book out there and remember, it doesn't have to be a massive full-length book. You can take an existing PDF um, ebook that you've got and kind of flesh that out into something a little bit bigger, or you can take a series of blog posts, put that together into something small. 
it doesn't have to be a massive book. You can start small and then work your way up from there once you've got experience in the process and feel comfortable with book project management. Excellent. Yay. Yay. So is that everything? Is that, is that anything else? Or you've, you've oh, kind of I gone through like those I'm steps? I'm so terrified and... that I've like left something huge out of the process, but I feel like that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, again, marketing the book is a whole other process, a whole other conversation, Mm -hmm. but a lot of the book marketing tasks you'll already be doing in your business. So yeah, Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's, you know, anything major that I've left out. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much. That has been really enlightening. I I, I love it when somebody's able to explain something in really simple terms to me, (laughs) because that's how my brain works. That sounds doable. Yeah, I'm, it uh, is. I'm. I'm quite excited to see what what comes out of this, and I can't wait to to hear. Maybe maybe this will be the inspiration for a thousand new books that that go yeah, out. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. So just share with people the details of of the books that are available from Miss, Miss Holly Wharton. And- <laughs> well, at the moment, um, all I've got available is my book called Business Blocks. And that book has over 600 belief statements that make up a successful business mindset. Um, my second book, which will be coming out in just a couple of weeks, it might be out by the time we this podcast goes live, mm. it's called Business Blocks. And it looks at the different ways that your mindset can have blocks that hold you back from creating a successful business mindset. I've got more business mindset books mm-hmm. planned for this year. I actually have, I've got a calendar on my wall. I've got a book release every month for the rest of the year. We'll see if that happens, but oh my word. Uh, yeah, well, cause I've got business books and then I've also got, I do a lot of walking on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, so last year I walked the South Downs way on my own. I've got a book about the South Downs way and that is a full length book. It's 60,000 words and that should be coming out in June. Um, so for every long distance walk that I do, I'm planning to write a book about it. So oh my word. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. I love yeah. that. Oh, well, we will um, include in the show notes the, the links to the books that are, are published. And I'm, I'm sure if you follow Holly regularly, you'll be able to uh, get details of the, the subsequent books as and, as and when they're, they're published. But, yeah. um, thank you. That was really educational. I, I, I love when I, I get to learn something new. So I, I'm sure that our listeners will have uh, learnt lots as well. And I hope it inspires people to take the leap and write that yes. book. Yes. Yes. Okay. Holly, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you all for listening and we will speak to you very soon. Great. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed our little chat on how to get a book out of your head and onto Amazon. And if you have any questions, please do get in touch. My website is hollywharton.com. I've got a contact form on there. You can just send me a quick message. I would love to um, answer any questions or help you out in any way if I can. And remember that we also have that free download. So if you go to um, hollywharton.com forward slash 155. You can just uh, click a link on there and get the downloadable PDF that walks you through a lot of the steps that we've included here. And I've actually also included some tips that we didn't mention in the podcast. You've got even more information there to help you get started writing your first book. All right. Thank you very much and have a great day. Happy writing. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.